Thank you so much, Shannon. I love you. I just love you. Okay, that was the best introduction ever. Thank you, everyone. I'm so glad you're with us tonight. Um, we're going to make a few uh, Passover dishes from the around the Jewish world, meaning uh, we're going to have a dish from Iraq, where my family is from originally. Uh, we have a dish from uh, Morocco, and we have a Sephardi dish. Um, meaning a dish that came probably all the way from Spain in the medieval times and traveled to the Balkans and then North Africa and arrived to Israel also. That's the true meaning of Sephardi food. Um, so uh, let's start immediately. Uh, you're gonna see that uh, this is very fancy here because my uh, son Eviatar is behind the camera. Can you say hi? He's gonna say hi. And I have a, hello. Hello. <laughs> I have an adult son with a beard. So uh, Aviatar is going to control the camera, and uh, so uh, you can see everything that I cook. Um, so I want to start uh, as with uh, as is very appropriate for a seder, uh, Passover seder. I'm going to start with the Iraqi chavoset. Uh, the Iraqi chavoset. Um, uh, is made with two ingredients, usually two ingredients, uh, walnuts, but that can be actually, uh, that's what I use here and that's very common, but you can use uh, peanuts are common for these, um, almonds too. Um, and the main ingredient is uh, date molasses. Um, it's also called date syrup or uh, date honey or silan in Israel. Um, and what's interesting about this ingredient, well, first of all, let me tell you, you can buy this at many uh, kosher supermarkets, definitely if it's an uh, Israeli-owned uh, supermarket. Um, it's this dark, sweet liquid with earthy, sweet flavor. Um, and you can buy it online also, and you can buy it at many, many Middle Eastern uh, grocery stores because it's used uh, in many countries all over the Levant and the Middle East. Um, so uh, what's interesting about this honey is that it's, um, according to some researchers, uh, when in the Bible, when uh, the term honey in the Bible, in some, in some uh, uh, occasions, it refers to this uh, date honey, date molasses. Sometimes it actually even refers to just dates, and sometimes it may be dibs, which is uh, uh, grapes uh, honey, like syrup like that. But in many times it's this, uh, this thing. So that's what the Iraqi Jews are eating. They eat it on Rosh Hashanah as honey. They eat it as part of the chavoset uh, for Passover. I talk so much, uh, let's start cooking. I have a mortar and pestle here, so I'm gonna grind the, um, the walnuts. And you know, you can do it with a food processor. I was just trying to be fancy, but this mortar and pestle I, I really got from my grandmother's cousin, Toya. Uh, she brought it with her from Baghdad. Um, I'm half Iraqi and half uh, Polish. Uh, as many Israeli Jews are. So I'm just crushing the uh, walnuts. And again, you can really just do it uh, in any way comfortable for you. Food processor or in a plastic bag with a hammer of some kind. Uh, it all works fine. I assume my grandmother used to make it this way. So I want to grind them pretty well. Um, I will leave some chunks, but in general, they are pretty well grounded. Take a little longer and I'll sh show you what I mean. Like this. I, I don't know if you can see, but they are grounded well. And now I'm going to add, you have the quantities in your packets, but uh, I'm just going to add uh, the silan, the date molasses, until I, until I like how thick it is or thin. 
you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, another thing to do with date molasses, if you bother to go and buy it, um, is just mix it with tahini. It's like a halva flavor. Uh, halva f you're gonna get like a halva flavor uh, spread to dip uh, pita with, with or to um, uh, you know spread on a sandwich. It's really really good and healthy. Uh, I'm gonna add some uh, cardamom here, just a little bit, and mix it in. Um, and that's it. That's the easiest course, probably. It's super delicious. If you uh, use a combination of different nuts, it's going to be, you know, maybe more interesting. You can also use uh, actually roast, like toasted and salted peanuts, for example. Um, and it will add another layer of flavor to this. So, uh, that will be nice too. Uh, this is a small quantity, um, but you know, depending on how many people you have for the Seder, this dark, delicious spread is uh, what you can very easily use. Uh, as, Barrett, uh, would you make that? Like, Barrett, would you make that ahead of time, or would you make that right before the Seder? What, what's what's usually the best way to do it? You can make it, it's like honey, so you can leave it outside. The honey and nuts, you can just leave outside for days. Um, so you can make it anytime. You can make it, you know, a few days even before the Seder. Definitely just keep it in a sealed container or cover it with plastic, tightly with plastic, and leave it at room temperature because um, otherwise the sugar will harden mm. in the fridge. Okay. Um, but yeah, you can definitely make it ahead of time. Okay. Um, so that's uh, just, uh, that's how uh, Iraqis make uh, the uh, haroset. But uh, what I started making in the last few years is uh, just, you know, just a little fun uh, dish. Uh, that takes the inspiration from this one. So uh, I'm talking about uh, walnut and dates um, uh, truffles or balls. Uh, you grind them together, you mix them, then you get to dip them in chocolate if you want. Uh, so it's uh, really delicious. Uh, uh, let me show you how. So um, I have here dates that are pitted and I soak them in uh, boiling water before the class. Um, we're gonna use them in a second and we're gonna go to the food processor for a second um, so we can uh, grind the walnuts. So let's go here. Um, you can come closer, Rita. I have walnuts here, just put it in the food processor. Um, can you, do you mind uh, warming the chocolate for uh, 25 seconds in the meantime, in the microwave? So many things to think about. So I'm just going to pulse it a couple of times to leave the walnuts this time, to leave them uh, larger. Let's see, yeah, cool. Seems fine. Okay. Um, a second, you can wait here. <laughs> I'm gonna move the walnuts into a bowl here, a mixing bowl that we're gonna use soon. And now I'm gonna use the same uh, uh, food processor. You don't need to clean it. I'm going to put the, the dates with the water in. And Mm. 
Let's see, just a second. Um, I still see chunks of, uh, of dates in here, so I wanna mix it again. Because you want it to be as smooth, uh, as smooth as possible. Okay. This is good enough. It's hard to see because it's all stuck to the side, to the sides. But uh, let's move everything to back to here. Okay. So I'm going to put the dates. In here. Um, this is what the paste looks like, and I'm gonna add walnuts. Third, we have a question. I mean, we can't, yes, we can't discuss a recipe with nuts without asking about which other nuts could be replaced instead of walnuts is question number one. And the other right. question is, what kind of chocolate um, do you recommend? I mean, the recipe says baker's chocolate, but maybe you could explain a little bit more about what kind of chocolate when you, when you say that. The recipe says baker's chocolate? Uh, that's what somebody said. Let me, I'll, I'll look at it. Don't take, don't take my word for it. Hold on. I'll tell you okay, what it says. Okay, sorry, no. Uh, no. it says, oh, it doesn't say baker's chocolate. It says bittersweet, sorry. Um, yes. It says semi-sweet or yeah. bittersweet chocolate chopped. Right, right. So, I mean, you just use any chocolate that you like. The only thing I would say, um, and I hope I said that in the note above, but I'm not sure. Um, if you are serving it as we do sometimes during the meal itself, make sure, or, or you know, and for any other reason, um, if you want this to be parv, just use parv chocolate or vegan chocolate to keep the whole dish uh, parv. Don't use a dairy chocolate. That's the only thing. But other than that, my only advice, use chocolate that you like. I mean, there's no wool here or anything. Um, so, oh, and what nuts uh, you can replace the walnuts with? Uh, the same things I mentioned uh, earlier for the ferocity itself. Uh, peanuts will work well. Um, I, you want something that's not too hard. So I don't think uh, almonds will work so well. I think cashews will be fine. Uh, pistachios can be nice. Um, yeah, like I would say peanuts nuts, pistachios, uh, cashews. So I'm going to mix the dates with the walnuts. Um, so you know the, the fun thing about uh, uh, making these uh, you know over the top uh, truffles uh, dipped in chocolate then serve them uh, uh, as part of the Passover uh, plate, you know, at the beginning of the Seder instead of Haroset, is that, you know how in Passover we're trying to increase uh, the kids' uh, curiosity. Um, like we have uh, the um, root vegetable in, uh, in salted water in such a fancy meal and the kids ask, how come we eat? Uh, something like that in a, such a fancy meal, uh, such a poor uh, dish at the beginning. Uh, and of course, we have the Manishtana with all the questions. Uh, I think having a dessert at the beginning also uh, increased curiosity. So you roll uh, the dates and walnuts into uh, small balls, small truffles, and put them on a tray uh, lined with parchment paper. I think uh, you could hear uh, Snoopy uh, who's being very helpful in this class also. Uh, so in general, you can actually um, just uh, serve the uh, these frosted uh, truffles just like that. You don't have to dip them in chocolate. And Vitaush, did I had more uh, walnuts? Can you bring it back to a second? Thank you. 
Um, but you can definitely dip it, dip it in chocolate. Um, I have some chocolate here. It was chocolate chips uh, that we uh, melted in the microwave in uh, 30 seconds uh, installments. Um, I'm going to add some olive oil to it. You can add any oil. Uh, what that does is uh, it makes the chocolate be thinner when you dip it. So it's not too thick and it's not too hard later. So in general, you need to add about 10% of the weight of the chocolate in, uh, in oil. Um, so, you know, for this thing, I'm going to add about uh, one and a half tablespoons, I think. And I, yeah, you see it's already thin. And I have toothpicks here. I mean, this is a tricky part, of course, how to dip in the chocolate without dropping it in. But we're going to try. If you keep the um, uh, the truffles in the fridge uh, for like half an hour or so, and then uh, take it out and dip it, it's going to be easier. Um, so you dip it. We can then cover it with a bit more chocolate and sprinkle some of the extra walnuts on top. Okay, let's try again. They are very soft, so they're kind of falling apart when I put them in the chocolate now. So it is better to put them in the fridge a little bit before you dip them. Oopsie. I love the idea of serving these during dinner as a little as a little bite buried. I feel like must yeah. make feel so happy. Of course, it makes me happy the most. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is it basically. These are the uh, dipped one and the non-dipped ones. Um, and to make to make the chocolate uh, harder, you can uh, put it in the fridge for like twenty minutes, and the chocolate is completely hard, and uh, you can serve it already. And these two, you can um, you can make this uh, in advance. Um, and, um, you know, you can make it a day before or two days before, keep it in the fridge, uh, and take it out for at least like half an hour before you want to serve. Um, so, uh, uh, so that's it. Don't cover them in plastic until they're a little bit uh, hard. So, uh, you know, so it doesn't, doesn't get stuck to the chocolate. So are there any questions? So we can start with the next uh, dish. If you guys have any questions about the haroset or the haroset truffles, this is probably a good time to ask them. But don't ask me about nut substitutions. I already told you, you don't like nuts. You're allergic to nuts. <laughs> Make another recipe. That's it. Can you use the date that comes in a block? Do you mean date paste? Yes, the date, uh, date, exactly, yes, yeah. Um, I wasn't sure if I should mention it or not. That's exactly what I use always, and I always keep it at home. I have one that I, well, never mind, I have used uh, in, the, in the fridge right now. Um, the dates, date, it's like pressed dates, really. So it's uh, dates that are, um, it's similar. Sometimes you see uh, a block of uh, tamarind. It's, it looks the same. It's this dark, very thick uh, uh, date paste uh, that's very good for something like that. I also make cakes with it. It's very useful but because it's not easy to find. Um, I mean, I, I buy it regularly at the Persian store uh, where I live, um, but uh, even the kosher store that's Israeli owned uh, doesn't hold it. So, but if you can get that, and most uh, Middle Eastern stores have it, then please use it for this, for the truffles, 
uh, you can look at my website for uh, recipes with, for cakes and that. I mean, it's it's an amazing ingredient. I love using. It. How would you so, alter this recipe if you were going to use that version of the dates? Um, it's actually in the recipe. You have the option of using it. Okay. You have the instructions. So you basically instead of soaking the dates in water and running it in the food processor, you just use the block. Okay. You just use the press dates instead. So right. that's basically it. Okay. So there was one other question. Somebody wanted to know, yes. could you add apple to the Iraqi haroset that you made? Um, like cooked apple? I, I mean, I think, he, he, he I made, think if sure you cook raw. apple, excuse me? Um, he says raw apple. Raw apple. Um, I mean, it's going to be tasty. I'm sure it's going to be tasty. So why not? Uh, and maybe, maybe cooked apple will be better in this case. It's not traditional, but you know, I mean, that's, that should not stop us from doing anything. Great. Thank you so much, Farid. All right. We're moving. Are we sure. moving back to the, um, the we are moving on. We are moving on to the next dish, which is the Moroccan uh, Makuda. Makuda is a potato pie or uh, casserole or, you know, um, dish uh, that's cooked either in a pan as a cake and then sliced, or sometimes it is fried, so either as a whole large cake or uh, in Morocco they have, uh, they sell it as street food and make little patties of it and that are fried. Sometimes they even sell those inside the sandwich, which sounds so good. I mean, fried potatoes in bread. <laughs> Reminds me of my days in the Israeli army, actually. So, um, but what we're doing here is the uh, baked version, um, less calories, less oil, and um, and it is a dish that is loved by the Moroccan Jews, uh, and they serve it regularly on uh, for Passover. So that's what we're doing uh, now. Um, I have a nine-inch uh, pan. I'm just going to spray it with oil, and okay. The oven should be on 425 degrees, which is a uh, high temperature, but we're only doing it for the first 10 minutes, which kind of, uh, you know, uh, replicates the uh, frying uh, process, and then we're lowering it to 350 and continue to bake. So I have uh, pota peeled potatoes uh, with some skin on, actually, because I was too lazy, and also it's tasty. Uh, um, cooked potatoes that I uh, cooked this afternoon. You have the instructions in the, uh, in the recipe packet, but you know, basically you cover the potatoes in water, you cook them for 25 minutes after boiling. Um, and then when they, they are cooled down a little bit, you can peel them then. It's much easier than peeling them uh, before they're cooked. So I'm going to, um, I'm mashing them uh, with a potato masher, but they, they don't need to be uh, completely, uh, they can be, um, we can definitely leave some chunks and transfer it to a mixing bowl. Okay. A lot of potatoes. Okay. So this is it. You see, it's uh, very chunky. And um, let's move uh, to the stove now and deal with the rest of the ingredients. So um, the traditional way of uh, doing it um, is uh, to cook uh, some extra veggies besides for the 
for the potatoes and add them to the mixtures with eggs uh, and then bake it. Um, so what we have here, I'm going to uh, cook some chopped onion. Wait, sorry about that. With olive oil that I have here in the pot already, the pan. And uh, carrots that uh, I diced earlier. And we're going to cook it for a few minutes until the carrots are tender enough. Um, so let's just leave it like that. Let it uh, saute a little bit. Um, when the carrots will be kind of ready, I'm going to add uh, peas, fresh peas, and cook it for a few more minutes. Um, you can also use frozen peas um, or even the mixture of frozen peas with carrots that come ready. But it's much nicer, actually, uh, to have fresh ones. And, um, and they are available at this point at most uh, supermarkets. Um, Okay, so one more thing that we have to do is, uh, we can do it at the same time. We're going to, I'm going to uh, separate uh, the egg yolks from the egg whites and I'm gonna whip the egg whites uh, right here. So, uh, okay. Okay. The egg yolks will go uh, directly to the potato mixture and the egg whites I'm going to whip and fold in later. Two, five eggs. This is the holiday of eggs, so. Vered, we have a couple questions from people. Yes, please. That they, they don't have, they don't eat peas during Passover. They don't like peas. Would you just, right. keep, would you leave the peas out entirely? Yes. I mean, if you're not eating peas, uh, this is definitely uh, goes by the Sephardi law of uh, eating peas, meaning legumes on, uh, on Passover. If you're not, then uh, definitely leave it out. Um, and just, you know, you can add, um, either way, you can actually add, uh, um, a parsley, for example, um, uh, and other herbs, if you like, uh, and that's it. I mean, it's supposed to be a simple dish, uh, so, uh, just omit the peas. You can add a bit more carrots and add parsley. Just a second, I'm sorry. I need to wash my hands here. Uh, let me mix this in the meantime. And okay, let's start uh, whipping the eggs also. Can you show this? Okay, we're gonna let this whip like so, listen here. If you do, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be quiet until the noise is uh, over. Yeah. Okay. Oh, can you see this for a second? Yeah, please. You don't want uh, the eggs to be too stiff. This is perfect. You see how it stays uh, on the fork, but it's not so, it's not overly stiff because when it is, um, because when it is, it means that uh, it's gonna be 
the eggs are getting very, very dry and it's going to break down, etc. So uh, this way, uh, it's not too much and it's, uh, it's good for what the dish we're doing. Let's wait here a little longer until this is ready. Um, so yeah, what I was trying to say earlier is that um, on the other hand, if you do eat um, legum, uh, but you don't want to use uh, peas, uh, a wonderful substitute would be uh, green fava beans that are now in season, and that's why they're the star of many uh, Passover dishes for the holiday. Um, in you know, for Middle Eastern uh, cuisines and definitely in Northern Africa. Um, so that's also an option. They also come again if you go to Middle Eastern stores. Uh, fava beans, you can buy them also shelled already and uh, frozen. So uh, you can also use that instead of a tea. But that, of course, uh, assuming you are eating uh, eat me off vegan. Okay, so I just added the cheese. I'm gonna give it a couple of more minutes. Oh, this is so beautiful. And I don't know if you could see it, but uh, one key jump off the pan and Snoopy immediately uh, jumped on it. Okay, let's move here. Let's move back in here. So we had the potatoes, right? I'm gonna add some salt and turmeric. Look at the beautiful color. Uh, some uh, black pepper. And let's mix it for a second. And I'm gonna add the egg uh, yolks into our mixture. Mix it well. And at this point, I'm going to bring the cooked vegetables. You know, if we were not uh, during the class, so maybe I would have waited for another couple of minutes, but this is fine. It's gonna be uh, in the oven for a long time. So I know for sure that it will be, um, it will be cooked through by the end. Okay. Let's mix it. Whew. It's going to be so delicious. Love dishes like that. I mean, you can see it as a type of a kugel. Of course. Okay. And the last step is to uh, kind of fold, you can't really fold uh, uh, the eggs here because, um, because this mass is very uh, thick, but we will do as much as we can to keep all the air in the eggs, or some of the air in the eggs. Um, mix it gently here. Um, and when it's mixed, as I mentioned earlier, um, we're starting with very high heat. 
uh, then we're, we will reduce it um, to medium heat. And at hey. that point, we will let it cook through. Yes, Shannon. Hey, hey Vered, somebody was asking, um, there's, no, is there, there's no chicken in what you're making, right? The one you're making is vegetarian? Yes. Right, right, okay. Um, so I think some people sh sh commented that maybe there's another version that's similar that has chicken in it. Um, is that true? You know, I am actually not familiar with a version with chicken, but I'm sure... I mean, if people are saying that they know this version, then I'm sure it exists. I, I like in Israel, I don't think uh, Moroccan Jews are doing it uh, with chicken ever. Um, and I don't remember seeing it uh, as the street food or something. So I'm, I'm curious, but uh, I, you know, maybe it's something similar, but not exactly it. I'm not sure. Okay, thank you. Somebody, somebody also said that this was the perfect vegetarian dish to serve to their to their son, and I thought that was such a great idea because I'm sure. It, it, oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. It, it can be a main dish uh, for vegetarians for sure. I, I, it's delicious for everyone. It's just, uh, and the thing is, I mean, you can. It can be part of the seder itself but it's you know it's also a casual dish that you can cook uh, for the weekdays of uh, Pesach um, okay so we're just gonna kind of flatten top to make it nice and at this point um, we're gonna drizzle some oil on top because again, like, you know, the original one is fried or some versions are fried. So we want to have some of the joy of the oil. And there it goes to the oven. We and have a that's it. We have a couple more process questions, Vered. Um, yes, please. Her name is Vered. You want to say hi? Hey. <laughs> that's my, Hi. That's one of I my can't see you, but I hear you. <laughs> um, does, she, does she sound like more Anat? A little bit. Um, so some, somebody wanted to know, could you, this seems like the kind of dish you, you could make ahead of time and then reheat, right? Right, um, right, yeah. And it wouldn't be a Jewish cooking class if somebody didn't ask, can you freeze it? Can you freeze it and reheat it? <laughs> It seems like you don't like these questions. I don't know what you're trying to say here. I mean, I'm confused. No, I love them. I love them. <laughs> what, 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 yes. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a valid question, of course. And definitely when you make a, a, a meal that's so elaborate and uh, like you need to feed so many people. Um, but the truth is like with potato dishes, I prefer not to freeze them. Uh, I mean, you can make this even two days uh, ahead or uh, and bake it and everything. Uh, you can also just, as I did, uh, pre-cook the potatoes and pre-cook the vegetables, even mix them with the potatoes and leave it like that. And on the day off, just add the eggs um, and, and bake it fresh. So you really leave for the last day, you leave only the whipping of, the, of eggs and mixing it in and baking. So that's not too much. Um, and you'll have it fresh and the, that is nicer. Is that a valid question, uh, answer? I think it's a great answer. I think, you know, like I think that everybody wants to do prep ahead of time. And there are certain kinds of dishes that lend themselves better to being able to freeze and some that are just better for sort of like making, you know, a little bit closer to the meal or even a day or two. Right. Um, right, right. I don't know if we're going to have time for this question, but it certainly is something I would love if Barrett has time at the end to answer. Somebody asked yeah. what, what it was like to help to prepare a meal for the Obamas. So I don't know if you if you're gonna have time oh. later, but if you do, I'm well, sure we'll all love to hear that. I can talk while I'm 
squeezing out the liquids from the uh, matzah here. Um, not that I have so much to say, but uh, I will, or if you have more specific questions. Um, but let me just quickly explain about this dish. It's called bombuelos. It comes from uh, the Spanish uh, cuisine. Um, I'll talk as I do this, but I have here matzah that I crumble. These are five matzahs. I crumble them before the class and soak them in water. So now I'm going to squeeze out all the water from them. Um, and uh, and put them here in the bowl to then mix them with other stuff. Now, bonguelos in general, like you can find to this day, you can find uh, uh, recipes for bonguelos or bonuelos or bonguelos uh, in Spain and, uh, and for Jews who came from the Balkan and Turkey and uh, other former uh, Sephardi communities. Um, and it, so it basically means uh, fritters, but for the Jews, uh, those fritters, when it comes to uh, Passover, they're made with uh, soaked uh, matzah that's mixed with, in our case, with cheese. Uh, and these are savory bomuelos. There are many uh, sweet bomuelos also that are uh, you know, they're just matzah with eggs and then they're dipped in a sugar syrup uh, at the end. So uh, that's another type. Um, so these one have uh, eggs and uh, feta cheese and um, kashkaval cheese, which is uh, like a hard cheese from the Balkan. Um, and you can get that at some uh, kosher stores and some Middle Eastern stores, but you can really use any hard cheese that you like, like Parmesan or uh, Pecorino, um, etc. Um, okay, so I actually finished all this uh, matzah thing without talking about Obama. So let me just explain that I uh, did cook for the Obamas uh, one Seder, uh, but by the time uh, me and Susan Barocas uh, was cooking with me got there, um, the chefs already uh, made the menu um, and like we were only able to add a couple of dishes of our own. I made... Uh, a dish of uh, quinoa with uh, sweet potatoes and kale. Uh, I was trying to um, to make Obama happy because I know he, uh, he loves uh, sweet potatoes. And indeed, one of the waiters, uh, one of the waitresses, told me that he asked about this dish and that he liked it. So, like for me, I've done my thing in this life. Um, they actually asked me to do it again the next year, but I had my son's bar mitzvah in Israel at the same time, so that was it. Um, okay, so we have the uh, matzah here. I'm gonna add the ground kashkaval, um, crumbled feta. And eggs. I'm gonna actually um, eat the eggs here first and then add them. Okay, and if you're interested in that salad that I made for Obama, then uh, it's actually available, the recipe is available on the website. And I, I did share your website with everybody, it's baradgutman.com, so we'll share it again. Um. Okay. So, oh, your daughter is there? Yes, I'll mute. I'm so yeah. sorry. She, she was so excited wa watching you make something for Passover because she's learning about Passover in school. So she said, uh -huh. Is this for Passover? I said, Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think uh, Snoopy here, you can show him. 
uh, is also very excited about Passover. Oh, um, oh my God, that his... doggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. At least he's polite now. Uh, and does not bother me too much. Okay, so what you want to have is a mixture that, can, that you can fry, that you can make small patties of and fry. Um, so let me check. Um, this seems a little maybe too soft. So what we can do is, um, that's why I have the matzo meal here next to me. You can add a little bit of that. And there were a couple of questions in. about the kind of matzo that you used also for this. Could you use, would it also work with a gluten-free matzo? Like what, what are the different things that you could use, you know, as sort right. of like the bulk of it? Um, I never tried to make it with a gluten-free matzo. I don't see why it will not work. So I assume, I assume it will in short. Um, because all you want is like the matzah to be able to absorb uh, the water, etc. So if you use the gluten-free matzah um, and if you mix it and you see that it's too uh, too watery, just uh, you know, just soak another matzah or a couple more matzahs. Let's move here. Uh, soak a couple more matzahs in the um, in the in water and uh, then uh, and then add it to the mixture um, so it's thick enough. Um, so yeah, I I would assume that it works, but again, I didn't try it, so so I can't say for sure. Did you say there are other questions? What's over there? There, I mean, there are always other questions. Yeah, um, so please. As somebody wants to know, um, do you do you season this? Does it get onion, garlic, salt, or pepper? And somebody wanted to know, rather than frying, could you make it in a loaf, like a kugel, and slice it? Mm. I think, like, if you wanted to make it into a loaf or like a kugel, um, you would have to add some oil into it because otherwise it's going to be really hard. Let's um, take something else. It's pomuelos. They're supposed to be fried. That's what they are. Right, right, right. But like, uh, you know, a mixture of uh, of matzo and eggs and uh, um and cheese, sure, it will be nice. It will be, there are actually those uh, types of, uh, of uh, Passover uh, matzah pies that are called mina from the, um, like uh, mina del queso or mina de spinaki uh, with spinach or with meat. Um, and those are um, uh, basically, it's it's basically this thing, but only in the shape of a, of a, of a pie. So uh, maybe look for a for a mina recipe. I think that would be uh, uh, what you're looking for. Because just to bake this, it's gonna be difficult uh, to make it work without me trying it first. You're gonna have to add uh, oil to make it. Uh, um, you know, tasty and with good. Uh, oops, oops. Somebody um, else asked about the types of cheese. Um, if you didn't want to use feta, could you use a kind of shredded cheese instead? Uh, yes, I think so. Why not? There's no reason why not. Okay, um, you could use uh, two spoons or uh, to drop uh, the bombuelos into the oil. 
and then just fry them uh, for a few minutes on each side. Um, to answer Susan, Kashkaval is not the same as, well, I don't know. Bulgarian What's cheese and Kashkaval cheese, are they the same? No, right? No, uh, Bulgarian is, uh, is a type of like salty cheese. So it's more like a feta cheese, only with a kind of uh, different texture. Um, so no, Kashkaval is more like pecorino or... It's like uh, it's like Parmesan cheese, but it's not as sharp, so it, it's more mild in flavor. Um, but Parmesan will work also, um, and like you can do Bulgarian cheese instead of the feta, um, which again, like it would probably even be more accurate to the recipe itself because it's from the Balkans and that's probably what people are using. Um, but uh, because it's not always easy to find, I, uh, I say feta, but you can use uh, Bulgarian cheese instead of feta if it crumbles uh, well enough. Um, so uh, we're basically just frying this for a few minutes on each side. Uh, three to four minutes on each side, and uh, that's it. Can I get a spoon from the drawer, please? Thank you. Um, any other questions? Well, first of all, my daughter says they look delicious, and she wants me to make them for Passover, so I will have to. You will have to. She loves feta cheese, and I had to go get her some uh -huh. feta out, of, out of the fridge right this very moment. Um, <laughs> okay. So um, someone wanted to know, could you add the green parts of the green onions? And someone else wanted to know if you have a... Oh, to this. Yeah, yeah it would be delicious. Yes, yeah. Someone else wants to know, like, could you make a sweet version of the green? Yeah, as I said, uh, yes, it's actually like man, many Jewish families and also in Spain, they serve them well as sweet ones. Um, I don't have the recipe at the top of my head, um, but uh, in general, it's like a mixture of the of, uh, eggs and, uh, and the matzo that you then dip in a sugar syrup that you prepared in advance, something like that. But you, you need to look for a recipe for that. But definitely, yes, they are. They do come sweet also. Okay, another question. So, uh, would yeah. you think that these could work in an air fryer? Uh, if you spray them with oil, for example, uh, I think so. I think so, yeah. I would try them, you know, again, like, um, I think they should work, yes, yeah. I mean, maybe you want to add, you know, a tablespoon or two of oil to the mixture if you do that, and of course spray them with oil when you put them in the fryer, uh, but I think it should work either way. And let me know if it does, because... Uh, I do not have uh, an air fryer, but uh, you know, I can try then making it in the oven. Um, but let me tell you something. I mean, it's not something you eat every day, obviously, but these are so delicious. I would eat them every day, not only for Passover. So, you know, I didn't have an extra spoon with me, so they did not come up so round. But, uh, you know, they can come around uh, beautiful very easily. Um, and that's it. No snow peas are not for you. Um, so that's it. Give me the last few questions. All right. I'm looking. I'm looking. <laughs> um, I don't see any ones that are pressing right now, but this is, um, if there's any last questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and we can ask the last ones. Um, I, I did see that 
for the air fryer question, you might want to look up some air fryer lock recipes. That might be a similar technique. Um, somebody wants to know, uh, could you make yeah. the buñuelos with matzo meal instead of matzo? Um, I think they will become too hard and too, too thick. Like, uh, and it's, again, it's going to be hard to, to know exactly how much liquid to add to it. So, you know, um, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but you need to figure out the ratio between the matzo meal and the water. So it's just easier to follow this uh, yeah. tradition and just do it this way. Um, a couple of people want to know what the, could you show? Um, oh, your dog too. Yeah, oh, here we go. That there, there's yeah. Blintz and Bobka. Can you? See, oh, you can't see them, but that's <laughs> Blintz and Bobka. <laughs> Blintz and Bobka. Um, somebody wanted to just see. They want to see what the fritters look like. Could you show one up close and maybe show inside? Somebody would see if you could break one open. Oh, sure. It's just hot, but let's try. Careful, don't burn. Oh, ah, this is like uh, Instagram. Um, <laughs> no. It's beautiful. Yum. Hot. <laughs> Yum. Mm. Guys, th everybody, for thank you so much for everybody joining us. I Again, I love learning from Vared so much. Vared, thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Beautiful recipes and expertise with us. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. All of the recipes are on our website, thenasher.com. Please go visit Vared's website, varedgutman.com. No www, just varedgutman.com. Um, it's also in her in her bio, and you can Google it. And um, uh, we'll be back on Sunday evening with Sonia Sanford with two super easy one bowl Passover desserts. Um, and I will be there to moderate and tell you to stop asking substitute questions once again. Um, <laughs> Chag Sameach, Barrett. Thank you so much. Chag Sameach. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Recording.